Hey everyone, this is Lex Levenrad, and on today's training, I'm going to show you guys how you can use Realtor.com to search for properties. For those of you that don't know me, my name is Lex Levenrad. I'm the founder of the Distressed Real Estate Institute, and I'm teaching new real estate investors just like you how to buy, wholesale, fix, flip, and rent real estate. All right, so now on with today's training. So the website you're going to use is Realtor.com, and there it is right there, okay? And uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put in a, any city that you may be interested in. So in this case, I'll put something uh, local to me. Let's say I live in Florida, so I'll put in Pompano Beach, which is a town that's like one town over from where I live. And I'm going to go search, right? So now the default that's going to come up, it's going to show 4,371 homes, right? Uh, what you want to do is change it from relevant listings down to sort by lowest price. Now, when you do that, it'll bring the low to high up, right? So cheapest properties first. Now, what you need to do is apply a filter. So what I'm going to do, I'll click on any property type. And I'm going to change that just to single family, all right? I'm not really looking and flipping land or farms or mobile homes or condos uh, because there's issues with the HOA. So I want to primarily focus on single family homes. Now, you can look at multifamily too, but for purposes of this exercise, I'm just going to do single family. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and click on the gray background for whatever reason you need to do that in order for it to come up. And now we're down to 1,894 homes, all right? And let's go through and just point out a couple of things for you guys to see. First of all, you have these tags over here. So this one says pending, that one says new and pending, all right? This is pending. So as you can see, the vast majority of things are pending. However, that one is not. Uh, and this is very common on the MLS. You'll see stuff will go on the market and it'll be immediately get snapped up. Here's a new listing that's not pending, okay? So you can, uh, uh, let's just backtrack for a second and talk about what Realtor.com is. So Realtor.com is actually an aggregator of all of the MLSs in the United States. So what that means is if you are a real estate agent and you post a property for sale, on your MLS, regardless of whether your MLS is in California or Texas, Nevada, Florida, it doesn't matter. It includes every MLS in the United States. And then what they do is they syndicate through something called an MLS feed. And the largest site for syndicating is Realtor.com. So that means every property listed on the MLS in the United States is also listed on Realtor.com. When the property is listed new, it gets a new tag. And if there's no one yet that's bid on it, then it does not have a pending tag. If somebody has made an offer on the property and the property is now marked as contingent or pending, then it gets a pending tag, all right? Now, new listings often have this feature where it says photo coming soon, okay? So by scrolling through, you can just very easily see the, the ones that are not pending versus the ones that are pending. And the same principle applies for any city. In fact, now that I've done that, I can actually just back, backspace and put in another city. So let's just put in, I don't know, Arlington, Texas, okay? Just to randomly use a city that came to mind. So same exact system, right? You can see pending, 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 uh, etc. This one's new, photo coming soon. So it's the same system. It doesn't matter which city or state that you're in, the system is the same. Now, another thing that I want to point out as well uh, is that when you're scrolling through the listings, I want you to notice how it says the agency that brokers it, in other words, the real estate broker name. But what I want you to notice how you see some of them have a logo like this one and some and, and some of them do not do not. Like there's a logo, right? Now, this is the interesting thing. The interesting thing is is that approximately only nineteen percent of the listings on realtor.com have that tag on there, this. And uh, the reason for that, believe it or not, this is crazy. I know it's going to sound crazy to you, but it's because real estate agents simply don't know that it exists, okay? And that's something that used to be called showcase listing, then I call it something else, but it gives the realtor the ability to put their picture, their contact info, and their their info for their brokerage there, which is huge for a number of reasons, but most importantly to you as an investor, because if you were interested in offering on this property in 1708 Sharon Street, you could just go ahead and call the Sky Mark directly, and there's his number, and you can say, hi, is that property available? I would like to make an offer on it. Um, so what's interesting about sorting low to high in any city, and I'll go ahead and I'll just pull in another city so you guys can see how this works everywhere. Uh, so let's pull in... Um, 
let's do Los Angeles. Not a great market because it's very diversified, but um, okay, so now I got 2,268 homes sold by lowest price, and we've checked off single family. So it's the same principle, right? So out of 2,268 homes, this one here is the cheapest. So I want you to think about that for a second. You've got a lot of listings on each page. If you scroll down all the way to the bottom, you can actually see that there's 15 properties per page and there's 152 pages. So what that means is that uh, there's 2,000 plus properties that are higher than that price point. So if you go on page one, your first 15 properties, it starts at a 130, goes to 165, 199, and by the bottom of the page, you are already at 225. Or expressed another way, out of 2,268 properties, if I deduct 15 from that, 2,253 properties sell for more than 225. So do you think perhaps something that's selling at uh, 190 or 130 or 165 could be a deal? I say could because it's not necessarily definitely a deal, but it could be a deal, right? And the reason I say that is simply because there's so many other properties that are listed at a higher price. So generally speaking, and this is a generalization, but it's applicable probably 90% of the time, the lowest price houses in any market in any city. So let's go ahead now and do um, Detroit, Michigan. All right. So, and, and I'm doing this, I'm jumping around from place to place just to show you how the system is the same. Because I got students all the time and they say to me, you know, Lex, I see you're doing a lot of deals. Uh, um, but how does this apply in my market? And I say, listen, buddy, it doesn't make a difference which market you're in. Every property on the MLS is listed, it's syndicated to realtor.com. You can go on realtor.com, you can sort low to high, you can pick up the phone and call the realtor and make an offer. So here you can see in Detroit, Michigan, this property is listed for a dollar. Now this one looks pretty trashed, but that one doesn't. Um, and uh, this one clearly for a dollar uh, needs to be demolished, so I'm not sure what you're buying there. It looks like a fire damaged property, right? So does that. Um, but he has one for $500, and I don't know, you'd have to click on the pictures and, and get additional info to see where it's at. So on any property that you're clicking on, let's just say take this one as an example. When you click on it, what you're really looking for is a listing agent's phone number. So in this case, it's Gregory, and you're trying to get his phone number because you're interested in maybe making an offer on this house, okay, for $1,000. Now, while I'm on that topic, just keep in mind, just because the property is listed at 1000 doesn't mean it'll sell for 1000 It could sell for 900 or 800 or 700 or 600 but it could also sell for 1500 or 2000 or 3000 or 5000 A lot of investors, especially new investors, make the mistake of just assuming, well, he's asking eighty grand, so I'll offer seventy five. And that's a very bad assumption because what you really need to know is what the house is worth. And that's what I spend three days teaching at our boot camps because it's really the, the, the nutshell of everything is understanding what a property is, is listed at. So in this case, if you just went and dug down a little further, you'd see that this is on, on auction where the starting bid is $1,000 and there's no reserve. So now the big question would become, well, where is that auction if you wanted to bid on it? Now, this is where you run into issues where if you had a listing on the MLS, if you were actually an agent yourself, you would have to see additional info. So for example, if you wanted to call Gregory, well, what would you do? Most people would fill in this form and say, hey, I'm interested, and then say contact agent. But here's a little trick I'm going to share with you guys. When you do this and you fill out this form, guess who it goes to? I'll give you a hint. Not Gregory. It goes to some agent that purchased this zip code. And then that agent becomes a buyer's agent. And buyer's agents are trained to sell properties to people primarily with a mortgage. So they'll answer the phone and you'll be back to square one as if you'd called any random agent and said, hey, can you help me on this listing? What you need to do is try and get directly to Gregory. So I'll give you a little trick, right? And this is a neat little trick that I normally only share with my students, but I'll share it with you guys today. And that is that the ones that have the logo on them, all right, I'm going to put in another city because I don't see any logos there. Let's go back to... Uh, Pompano Beach where we were right in the beginning so the ones that have the logos on them so I can just scroll through real quick let's see if I can find one with a logo and, and and isn't this interesting that there's 15 on the first page and out of the 15 14 do not have their contact info so 
here's, here's my advice to those agents. You want to sell a house, but not so much because you don't even have your contact info on your listing. Uh, this one does. Okay, so I can see that's presented by Marina. So now I have an advantage because I have Marina's phone number. In the previous example, Gregory did not have a phone number. All right. So if you're looking for properties, I don't care what city and state you're in, and I'll type in another city and state here. Let's pick um, Birmingham, Alabama. I don't know why I keep picking Birmingham. I need to go there one of these days. Maybe because I bought a house for $100 over there, sight unseen. Um, okay, so let's say, now I'm just going to scroll through real quick. I can show you how quickly you can do this without even looking at the details. And as you can see, all 15, not one single realtor spent the whole $19 a month to get their contact info on there. But um, let's go to the second page. Nope. Oh, here's one. There we go. All right. So now if you wanted to call Brick, there's the phone number. In this case, it's an 855 number, so it's probably a generic number going through to the office. But you could make an offer. All right. So a couple of other things you can do when you're screening. So like, let's say, let's take a, a more expensive market. Let's take San Diego. This is a pretty popular market. And I used to live down there. I used to go to San Diego State. So Let's take San Diego. So keep in mind just what I did in the beginning, right, is I filtered lowest price and then I checked for single family homes. So whatever I put in this box now is defaulting to these filters of lowest price and single family homes. However, if I wanted to just start again, I could click on that Realtor.com logo, go back to the home page and start again. But there also are more filters. So let's say, well, you're looking for um, a house that has uh, three bedrooms plus. So you could go three plus. Let's say you want a property that has two bedrooms. Uh, two bathrooms plus. So there's there, there's that. So now what we've limited down is 802 homes. So so prior to doing that, if I say any, the there's 916 homes. Now depending on which market you're in, in some markets like here in Florida, there's tons of areas where a lot of the homes are two ones. And the minute you do this, you eliminate a ton of properties. In this case, you don't. So so you just you go from 916 down to. 802 so eliminated 100 so homes so so now you can go ahead and you can look and you can scroll through and do the same thing so you're looking for that agent info now on any of the ones that don't have the logo you have to do a little bit more digging so you have to go in there i wouldn't do that because if you do that you're going to go back to that form that i showed you before which is the same as this form but what you can do is you can scroll down through the listing and they keep moving it around every couple of weeks on realtor.com. So you can find there. So that's who it's brokered by. That's who it's presented by. Now you got to go ahead and call that number and, and see if you can get hold of the decision maker. Another thing I'd like to show you about this area here uh, is I'm going to go back to another listing. I'm going to go look for one that's got a logo on it again. Let's see if we can find anything. It's still loading up. Okay, so that's new construction, so that doesn't count. That's pretty funny. 15 properties and only one of them. Oh, there we go. There's one. Okay, so this is presented by Sandy, right? So this area over here, remember what I said about this not being the, the listing agent? But this area over here, sometimes you can also buy banner ads, and you can also get them sometimes in the lower listings. So for those of you that are agents out there, if you go to the bottom, there's often a banner that runs along here in that specific market. No one's bought it for that market, but if you were an agent in that market, you certainly could. All right. So, so um, that's in short a little bit of a search, and uh, you know we can go into more details. I could spend hours and hours. In fact, I've got you know probably five or six hours of training just on searching Realtor.com. Uh, on our on our training site for our students, but a couple of other things I want to note is the zip code. So you can sort by zip code. So you can change this here and just put in a zip code nine two one zero two. Okay, and now what you're going to do is you see there's only nine homes out of eight hundred and sixteen that are three twos in that zip code. So it gives you a good idea of supply and demand. Now another thing that you can do is you can go back like this and you can click back where you were from the di their directory structure. If you click through, you can see it says Central San Diego and then subdivision Stockton, subdivision Paradise Hills. 
subdivision Paradise Hills. So you can click on that subdivision and you can see everything. You can see 20 homes in that subdivision. So it gives you a good idea. Like in this case, you know, it starts at 250 and goes, you know, up into the fours. So that would indicate to me that there could be some potential for a fix and flip in that market. Okay. And that's without really knowing that market. So you can you can find out a tremendous amount just by going around and playing with the filters. And then on the more filters tab here, you could say hide new construction as an example if you're looking for fix and flips, right? You could check off, say, hey, I only want to see new listings. You could say, um, I want to hide the pendings and only show me the news. So let's say if you went like this and you said new listings, now you're down to four and bam, there's the four that you want to isolate on and that's in that specific subdivision. If I went back to the city of San Diego, there's 802 homes and now I can go back into my filters and I can say again, um, hide pending sales, show me new listings and now there's 219 results. So now I've just gone ahead and I've just narrowed it down, sorted by lowest price and I, I, I've got a field to work with of potential targets, right? So really what this boils down to is just knowing your target market. In other words, I don't know the specific market because I'm not there, but if it was my market, I would need to know, hey, is this a good price for a house in that subdivision? And what could I fix and flip a house for in that subdivision? All right, so play around with realtors.com. There's a lot of other things you can do. Uh, you know, I could go on and on and show you, for example, if you click on this little map icon there, it shows you where it's pulling deals in from. So you could see... Uh, where the boundaries of their map search is. You could scroll in and out as much as you wanted to. Okay. And then you could go back to your list at any time. And uh, if you start playing around with these filters and, um, you know, use radiuses around certain areas, there's a lot of criteria you can put in here. All right. So that ends today's uh, realtor.com training. And uh, guys, if you like this video, then uh, please go ahead and give it a uh, thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel so you get a notification every time we post a new video. Once again, this is Lex Levenrad, founder of the Distressed Real Estate Institute. And if you'd like to learn more about me, you can visit my website at lexlevenrad.com. And I've got a free book over there. You can click on download that uh, talks about wholesaling and flipping bank home properties. It's a great intro, intro for you on how to get started. All right, once again, Lex Levenrad, have a great day, everyone.